So you want to start playing Overwatch, or you want to reevaluate your skill in the game, but you want to do it in the right way. And you came to me to hear what I think is the best method for learning how to get good. If you are starting from a clean slate, you don't have to pay attention to this first step. But if you've played comp or the game in general for a good amount of time, pay attention. During your time playing the game, you've more than likely picked up some bad habits. Maybe you perform a mechanic in a very suboptimal way, or you're using an ability in a way that hurts your game more than it helps you. For instance, maybe you got into a bad habit of holding your ultimate for way too long and causing you to miss opportunities for key two-man alts. What I suggest you do might be one of the hardest things to do, and that is stop playing the game for one or two weeks. Yeah, you heard me. Stop playing the game for a couple of weeks. To allow your bad habits to decay so you can come back and focus on learning the skills you need to in the right way. Now that we got what I call the hiatus step out of the way, we can move on to the rest of the steps. The first thing you should do after jumping slash re-jumping into the game is play Soldier 76. Regardless of where he is in the meta when you're watching this video, Soldier 76 will be a very straightforward character with simple mechanics that can be very powerful when mastered. Trying to get good with Soldier 76 will force you to learn how to aim with hitscan and overall improve your aim with all types of characters. While you're working on connecting shots with Soldier 76, you will also be learning when to use his abilities like Biotic Field and his Helix Rockets. Both of these abilities are extremely important to Soldier's kit. Using his Biotic Field too early will result in not being very useful, and too late will more than likely result in you dying. While trying to hit people with your Helix Rockets, you will learn the basics of simple projectiles. Whether you're using it for a close range burst or a long range finishing blow, you will start to get the feel for an attack that doesn't hit the target instantaneously. Another thing that makes Soldier 76 a good starting ground for the game is his ultimate ability. His ult when used effectively can wipe out the enemy team, but when it's used poorly you can find yourself shooting into a defense matrix, Lucio sound barrier, or some other kind of shield. For Soldier 76 it is also very important to have good positioning, as it is with all characters. For Soldier 76 it is especially important Having good aim and ability know-how won't be nearly as effective when your positioning is garbage. To get good with Soldier 76, you'll have to learn where the high ground is and where you can stand effectively to help your team. If you do all these things, you can more than likely carry yourself to platinum with your soldier skills alone. When I say this, I mean you really need to get good with the mechanics that I mentioned. Positioning, ultimates, abilities, and aim. Over everything else, aim is the most important thing. If you have really good aim and decent everything else, you're more than likely able to push yourself into a platinum level if you play enough. What I mean when I say play enough, I mean play about 25 levels worth of Soldier 76 at least. That might seem like a lot of hours in the game, but you have to reach at least level 25 to be able to play comp anyway. I would almost suggest waiting until you get your first star before playing any competitive matches at all, as there are many different maps in Overwatch and many more characters to play with and against. There are any scenarios that could play out. For instance, maybe you're defending second point on Temple of Anubis because how often do you actually hold first point? Anyway, you're on the second point as soldier and your team takes out one of their tanks and one of their supports. It's now a 6v4 and you're feeling pretty good, but a wild Genji appears and decides he wants to go ham with his ult. If you haven't played against a good Genji very often or against a Genji on Temple of Anubis, this could happen. He alls and then ends up wiping you and three other players on your team out, leaving only a brain dead Junkrat and a mostly dead Reinhardt to fend off a 2v4. Not that it's entirely up to you to try to kill the alt in Genji, but having the knowledge and experience to place a properly timed helix rocket or be able to track him down with bullets as he flies across your screen. He might then decide to go hand with his alt, immediately getting destroyed by you. His alt gets wasted and then his team thinks to themselves that this Genji sucks while your team gives you mild compliments. Maybe. What I'm trying to prove here is that you need to play the game in a lot of quick play to better understand the mechanics. I'm not going to say you should never jump into comp at level 25, as it's only a game and it's meant to be fun for you and the people you play with, but I would recommend playing up to level 100 before playing any competitive matches. After you've completed all the steps with Soldier 76, you can now transfer your newfound skills into other similar heroes. What does that mean? Well, Soldier is a hitscan, right? What are some other hitscans? Well, there's McCree. He's a little slower and has a slower rate of fire, but he does more critical damage. There's Widowmaker, who has powerful long-range damage and is able to get key picks on key targets. 
Lastly, there is Tracer, who is able to dart around the map, flanking the enemy's backline and taking out their supports. Now let's say you take a major liking to Tracer after giving her a try. You then proceed to learn all of her mechanics, make adjustments with your aim and abilities, learn how to use her alt, and gain the knowledge to properly position her around the battlefield. Hey, you know who else is a flanker can dive into the backline? Genji. The powerful flanking options can be somewhat transferred over onto Genji. With a little bit of practice, you can learn the mechanics for his abilities, ultimate, and projectile based aim, and his deadly dash combos. Hey, you know who else uses projectiles? Mei. Her abilities act a bit differently from Genji's, but with your core skills with Soldier 76, Tracer, and Genji, you should be able to pick up a character like Mei rather quickly. Hey, you know who also has projectiles like Mei? Hanzo. You know who also is a sniper like Hanzo? Widowmaker. You know who is also a sniper? Ana. Now you've went the roundabout way to picking up a healer. Yeah, you probably could have gone from Soldier to Widow to Ana, or even Soldier to Ana, but I think you've got the point I'm trying to make. Learning the skills from a strong but straightforward character like Soldier 76 can make it much easier to transfer into other characters that you later might like to play. Maybe from the get go you're dead set on playing Reaper, you want nothing more than tear people apart as Reaper. Start with Soldier 76, and you'll be able to pretty much directly transfer over to Reaper, and the fact that you started with Soldier 76 will make you a more versatile player. Being a versatile player will allow you to deal with other good players effectively, so you only know how to play Junkrat. He is your bread and butter, and you are practically a god with him. But, you're playing against a player who is just as good as you are, but they play Pharah. If you also know how to play a really good Widowmaker, you can then play a counter to Pharah and take her out of the game. If they don't know how to play any other characters as well as they do Pharah, then a swap to Widow could very well win you the game on its own. Okay, now that I've explained skill transferring, you might be thinking, Wait, if I start with Soldier 76, how will I get to tanks or other specialty characters? Well, you might have already pieced together that Soldier does actually transfer over to tanks to a certain extent. His positioning can somewhat transfer over to characters like Reinhardt or Orisa. If you also picked up Tracer after learning Soldier 76, you might also be able to transfer over her skills onto tanks like D.Va and Winston, as they are both very good at diving backlines. Another way to do this is to learn to play the hero the same way you started off learning Soldier 76. Focus on the mechanics, look up tutorials about the hero in question, and find out what good positioning is for them, and how their ultimates are used effectively. Even if the skills don't transfer from Soldier 76 to whatever hero you're wanting to try, that doesn't mean there isn't a path from one hero to the one you're trying to learn. Having that core knowledge of the game with Soldier 76 can help quickly allow you to pick up new skills. Now that you've learned the basic formula and what I recommend, you're pretty much ready to head into Overwatch gameplay. However, I have a few final tips to help you keep improving. Number 1. Never assume that you're better than the other team and that your team is just bad. Yes, sometimes that will very clearly be the case and I would hope you wouldn't flame and just move on. Sometimes there were key moments that you messed up that more than likely could have won you the game. I'm not saying you always have to be this perfect player. You are only human. Unless you're an Omnic. If that's the case, I'm not so sure how your brain works. Anyways, if you're always re-evaluating how you play and really trying to find flaws in your play, you will be able to identify what you need to do to better yourself and what you can do to improve. My second tip to ranking up is that you should always be somewhat carrying the team if you want to move to the next rank. Say you're in gold and you're ending with a substantial amount of gold medals on damage and limbs or having done major work with your alt every time you used it. You more than likely deserve to be in a higher level. However, don't forget the first tip and flame your teammates thinking that you're better than them. My final tip is this. If you're going to play competitive, make sure you're having fun while playing the game. It is in fact a game and is meant to be fun. If the only reason you want to play comp is to be better than the other people or your friends, is it really worth getting frustrated over just so you can gloat? Anyway guys, that is my take on the best way to get good at Overwatch. Even if you don't think it's the best way to get good at the game, I hope you at least learned something or found it interesting. Have a good one watchers, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.